Well, hello there. Welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater, and I am your host, the Meat Geek. Welcome back, gamers. I hope you're enjoying your your Sunday so far. Just sort of taking it easy, relaxing. I'm going to be going to a pool party later on, but I'm going before I do that. I'm going to enjoy my little a little bit of Minecraft. Uh, pardon me while I sip on my Folgers coffee. Ah, yes. Great way to start the morning. Um, it was actually quite uh, quite late after the morning, but that no worries. I had a bit of a sleep in session today. We're going back to our Minecraft Lithos. I haven't played for a while. I've been resting. I've been going through. I'm coming out of a bit of a you could say a dark night of the soul. People like to call it, but I'm feeling better. I'm feeling more cool, more in in, in um, kind of level headed, relaxed. I'm gonna play my hair character, Captain Kool Aid Man number seven. Now we haven't doing a lot of. We're not doing a lot of missions right now. We're, we're now right now is we're just building a castle. We're just we're just building a castle wall, okay, around my village. Now we'll be doing uh, more complicated uh, projects later on, uh, but I'm not a professional like PewDiePie because he is really really an excellent Minecraft uh, uh, aficionado, and I highly recommend that you. You check out his YouTube channel if you want to see some really professional Minecraft work. In the meantime, if you just want to see a guy putz around with his Minecraft, I am not doing a lot of professional stuff with this right now. I'm just sort of going to close that door here. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to go back to sleep, go up, get back up. And I'm going to continue building um, my castle walls. That's all I'm doing right now. Um, I will be doing more interesting stuff in future episodes, but right now... We're just watch, we're just building a castle wall, a protective wall all around my village, and I eventually want will want to create more villages within these castle walls, and possibly uh, work on um, maybe a castle. I'm I am building a center castle in the middle here of this building, of this uh, establishment. But uh, in the meantime, let's continue building this wall, and uh, we'll go from there after that. Like we're we're, we're going to take it step by step. I find that. If I gradually, gradually work on this project, I'll, I'll give people more quality rather than quantity. So yeah, I'm not a professional YouTuber like many of the uh, Minecraft YouTubers out there that are just uh, going on incredible missions, building incredible structures. I'm sort of starting fresh. I did play Minecraft many years ago, but I had a bit of a hiccup in my life and I had to take a break from everything and now I'm kind of starting fresh based on on the knowledge I've gained from my Minecraft gaming in the past and I'm just sort of gradually step by step working my way up but what the priority now is to build a castle wall all around my villagers to protect them from attacks from the raiders that are up in the front so now we're just building 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 we're building a very thick wall by the way it's very th it's more more thicker than I've ever built a castle wall before as you will soon see what I'm talking about so sit back relax enjoy your, your cup of tea or cup of coffee and I'm just going to uh, you know I'm just thinking I'm just thinking if I should call rename this uh, YouTube uh, gaming Minecraft uh, playlist as Minecraft uh, video gamers Oasis um, VGO um, Wonderland Asmare ASMR because it is actually quite relaxing to listen to my voice. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of exciting things right now. I'm just sort of building, 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 and you can almost go into a hypnotic uh, trance listening to my voice while I'm building this wall. You know, if you're perhaps you're in, having insomnia late at night, you could listen to these videos um, on your headphones, and what would happen is basically you'd eventually fall asleep. Even if you had problems falling asleep before, my voice would just put you in a very deep trance. Very deep trance. So let's continue on. Let's get some torches. See if we can find some torches here. We do need some torches to light my way. Again, I'm just, I'm not a professional Minecrafter. I'm just starting fresh and learning as I go along. So. Bear with me as I work my way up here. All right, so just light this place up a bit more. 
we're going to do is we're just going to just going to build some more thickness to this wall because we need to it has to be thick all the way what I should have done is I should have uh, earlier I should have built this thicker from the beginning rather than going back to it but you live you learn as Alanis Morissette said once anywho it's a zombie there I'm gonna have to find a way to somehow uh, extricate or remove all sp mobs from the within the castle walls they're gonna I'm gonna have to destroy any spawn cages from within the castle walls and that way the place would be like a a sanctuary for the villagers they would never have to worry within the castle walls of any mobs all right let's kind of continue building here got to finish this project here so it's nice and tight and neat yeah. what's new for movies I'm just talking out of talking out of my mouth just to see if I can talk about anything else besides Minecraft uh, everyone's talking about the new spider-man new spider-man movie um, away from home with what's his name Jake 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 Gyllenhaal as Mysterio um, I don't know it, it kind of looks interesting it, I mean I don't want to say too much because obviously someone's gonna get really annoyed if I if I say something too much if I say too much and they say hey no spoilers please I haven't seen it yet so I don't know what happens exactly but I do know from the comic books not telling you from what happened in the movie it may be totally different in the movie that Mysterio, which Jake Gyllenhaal plays, is a a super villain in the comic book. Obviously, maybe he's a hero in this movie. I don't know, but he is a trickster villain who is uh, a spe uh, an ex special effects master, a special effects artist, and for some reason he wants to get at like in the comic book, not necessarily in the in the movie, but in the comic book he wants to get back at Spider Man, and he plays all these. He's weird illusions. He's a master of illusions with his technology. He doesn't use magic, but he uses technology to create holographic images, I guess. I guess that's what he does. He's a master at holograms. So It does look interesting because I did, I did it just um, about Jake Gyllenhaal. I really appreciated his performance in, um, in Donnie Darko. That was a really good movie if you haven't seen it already. Very creepy, but very moody, and I like that the concept of time travel in that movie uh, other movies I've, I haven't quite seen um, Bro Brokeback Mountain but I heard it was good it had, it had Heath Ledger in it from the, jo the Joker the Batman the Dark Knight um, Jake Gyllenhaal did he have any other ones that I, I enjoyed watching um, he was in J Jarhead play the soldier an ex-soldier marine or whatever I uh, didn't see that one, uh, but I, I pretty well um, am looking forward to the new Spider-Man movie. Um, there's got to be some really good um, Marvel movies. I don't know how they're ever going to top Endgame um, and uh, or they're, how they're going to top Infinity Wars and Endgame. That was, as far as, I can, as I'm concerned, the movie Infinity Wars, not the end, Endgame was, yeah, okay. But I really, really felt feel that Marvel's Infinity Wars was the pinnacle of how awesome Disney Marvel could be. Um, the fact that they made, they took, they played, they put so much effort, so much uh, screen time into one villain, and they developed the villain. Um, before their villains were often uh, very rushed and dismissed very early in the movie, where they were like not developed properly and I really appreciate what they did with Thanos like wow I never saw never thought that a villain could get so much sympathy I mean you could almost understand what he was what his idea was even though it was very dastardly um, he, in his heart and his mind he felt totally justified in what he was doing 
totally and he had no regret whatsoever that's what's very unique in a villain is that many villains uh, in the Marvel Universe um, are very soft um, they, they give in to sentiment or they get distracted by emotion by passion and this character was totally different like he was totally laser focused on what he was going to do and he did it he accomplished it in the movie and and I just found that no one had ever like Marvel had never done that with a villain before um, I just never saw it done so well and I don't know if Marvel could ever top that could ever make a a Marvel comic a movie that was so riveting and so edgy like to make a villain so powerful that he basically beats all of the heroes in that in that movie of course and if they could ever if Marvel could ever make a movie like that where it would you know I don't want to say Disney is too soft but I found I find that Disney Marvel needs to take more risks with with their characters and not be so safe um, but what I would like to do is if they would have more interesting stories like and also stay closer to the comics because I'm a, I am a comic nerd I used to collect comics a lot I used to go to um, Forest City Comic Con uh, I used to go to Comic Con in London Ontario um, I used to go to uh, comic, Free Comic Book Day they had that in London Ontario and I just loved going there uh, to collect free comics I also bought some few comics in the few past before and I really like the stories. They're very mythological, very um, epic, uh, weird. I like the weirder the better, personally, when they get really far, far fetched with the um, celestial creatures in the uh, Marvel universe. And I really wish they would um, they would go to some really deep lengths with the characters. They would try to. I really wish they would stay closer to the story, Marvel, really. Um, because that way, if they could do that, then they could have really so good, found good, um, solid storytelling. Rather than jumping to conclusions with the storytelling, they could actually make some characters based on the comic books and plot plots based on the comic books to make a really interesting story. And I know that if they if they'd only stay close to the to the story, well, they, they would have an awesome story. Um, I mean, it's not hard to, to make a comic book movie if you stay close to the comic book source. And I just don't understand, like, uh, the best, I don't know. I suppose the best example I can think of with Flawed, of course, would be of Watchmen, DC's Watchmen. That was a pretty hardcore comic I never saw a hardcore comic book movie made that, like that. It was really good. Um, spoiler alert, uh, there is no squid, though. And... My issue was that they should have they should have kept the squid in the in that in that uh, movie based on the 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 um, the graphic novel and so anyways that being said I I'm looking forward to how they're going to develop um, Doctor Strange there's going to be a new Doctor Strange movie coming out I'm looking forward to that because he's one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters he's interesting because he's a uh, he's one of the few magic using superheroes a lot of most of the superheroes are technology based or metahuman and he is a human being with with uh, with uh, magic powers and I find that very remarkable and very unique for a superhero so I'm looking forward to how they, how they develop him and the villain I hope they're gonna have uh, his nemesis come back that would be interesting if they can bring him back it'd be awesome um, but um, uh, everyone's talking about the new Thor and how in the in this movie and also based on the comic book Thor loses his his rightfulness to use the uh, his his he uses his power to use the uh, Ylmir the, the hammer and the Natalie Portman character scientist she's found worthy and she gets the uh, she gets the the hammer and gets these superpowers and as a reward and I don't know. Everyone's talking about how it's gonna kind of stink, but I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll pull it off. Maybe it'll be a really good story. I just don't know. Um, I mean, if they could put bring Loki back, that'd be awesome. I know that would be cool. I know I heard Loki's gonna be in the new uh, 
Guardians of the Galaxy, which uh, which I'm actually looking forward to it. I think I found it a very tongue-in-cheek kind of comic book show. Uh, leave your comments below. Appreciate your your feedback. Uh, what you think about uh, the comic book movies coming out? If you are looking forward to them, or have you have you feel that they've become tiresome? Um, you know, I'm always interested in knowing what your feelings are on these movies. Um, what else new is as far as movies go? I think. Um, there's a lot of talk, but uh, it's hard to know what's going to be good and what's not going to be good. DC, I don't know. They really dropped the ball with, with DC Justice League. I don't know how they're going to recover from that. It just seems that they uh, can't seem to catch up with the glory that is Marvel. It's like the Russian, they're like almost competing, and which brings me to that, again that that philosophy uh, that the book uh, Science of Getting Rich says is that uh, if you are trying to get rich with the mindset of competition, you're going you're 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 going to lose your ability to manifest great wealth because you're always going to be in a competitive mindset. But to be truly truly successful in this world. You have to break out of the competitive mindset and to go into the creative mindset and and to realize that there is an unlimited it goes back to Star Wars the force you know there is a substance uh, an invisible substance within all matter and between spaces that is intelligent thinking stuff and it's always there for you to manifest your your desires and all you have to do is think creatively. Think creatively rather than competitively. And I just really wish, not just not just DC, but I really wish, well, and that's one of the reasons why Marvel's successful, but I really wish that there were other movie f filmmakers would be more creative rather than competitive, and they would put more effort into their movies rather than trying to compete with the competitors, the other filmmakers. They would try to just give people works of art, like, I, I think back of George Lucas. I think back of Steve, uh, Steven Spielberg with his movies, uh, the Indiana Jones movies, the uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, even the E.T. movie. But uh, Jaws, those you know, those are those are blockbusters. But they're all considered also considered modern day classics. And the reason, in, in my opinion, that movies like that, Star Wars, um, the movies like, uh, you know. Um, you know, even George Lucas's, um, two, what was it, X2100? I, I got that movie on a DVD, basically, about the guy trapped in underground with robots. Those movies were so successful, either financially or, you know, artistically, on, art on critically, is because uh, peop they, those, those directors, um, they, they put effort into those movies, and they didn't rush it. I'm going back to bed because I am having difficulty with this one was it's a creature here. What what I'm trying to tell you is basically this uh, creature needs to die now, buddy. It's okay, buddy. What? That's not even buddy. That's a cat in the in the movie in the game. I I could tell. That's troublesome if I can't even tell the difference between a human, uh, my, my cat and the uh, cat in the, uh, okay, in the game. Anyways. So back in here. Where was I? I was talking about characters. Move, uh, film directors that put more effort into their movies rather than just trying to rush. See, that's the issue. That's my issue with filmmakers today. Is that they're trying to get a movie out into the box office as soon as possible? It's 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 not about 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 the art anymore. It's not about the creativity. It's not about the you know how can I create this world, this fantasy world, in the most beautiful, most evocative, dramatic way possible to capture the imagination of the uh, moviegoers. 
It's about how much money can I make in the box office. And that, to me, that's very, very distress, distressing. And if I may go on a rant even further, not just about movies, but video games. We, you know, we've heard a lot about about the the video game. What's that um, post-apocalyptic video game called? Um, uh, what's it's, it'll come to me. But basically, the um, the guy, the blonde guy with the blue shirt, with his thumbs up, and it's a post-apocalyptic video game, and. Anyways, that those games have been. There's been complaints how they were unfinished. Uh, it's been it's been happening. You know, Oblivion had to have those issues. Um, Skyrim, not so much. They put more effort into it. But I'm really, really uh, concerned about how video games have become so rushed that they're not considered considering the um, the creativity, and it's more about what can we release as soon as possible. And what I'd like to see with films as well as movies. And games um, is to put more effort. Uh, let's let's put a little bit more time. Doesn't have to be you know you don't have to spend a lifetime working on it, but we can at least put a little bit more effort and care into our craft so that we give people more quality. Like what they could have done with Justice League, instead of doing what they, the, in my opinion, it, uh, there were parts I did like with the the Batman and Superman confrontation when he got when Superman gets resurrected. But to me, that was a disaster movie, and that they could have done it so much better if they had, for one thing, each of those characters. They could have done the same thing with what they did with Mar with Marvel superheroes. That they could have had individual, individual movie characters, individual movies for each of those characters, and that way they would have, they would put more effort into each of those characters' develops uh, character development. And what would happen? What would would happen? Basically, is those characters would um, be well developed, and and it would just be a better story, better better movie if they, all those characters were developed, rather than cramming all those inter and introducing all those characters into one movie. Uh, they could have just developed them movie by movie. Um, Cyborg. Wonder Woman. They did that with Wonder Woman, which is a good story. I, I really enjoyed Wonder Woman. Of all the DC characters, I think Mar Wonder Woman was the best, even though it was somewhat familiar. It, it was interesting how they had a female villain as well as a male main uh, supervillain, Ares, the god Ares. So it was interesting how they developed, you know, the poison, Dr. Poison or something. She's some kind of mad scientist who creates poison for the Germans in World War One. Fictitious story, of course, but basically, I liked how they they developed those. Those were interesting characters, all of them, and I really and I liked um, uh, the character who played who played Captain Captain uh, Kirk in the Star Trek, the new Star Trek movie. The actor who played him, he was really good as the 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 pilot. Was he a pilot who crash lands in on an island? That was a good character, good acting. And I just really appreciated what they did with it. And if they could have done that with, with Cyborg, they could have done that with The Flash, they could have done that with... Um, well, they did that with, with um, Aquaman. I didn't... I'd yet to see that movie, but I heard it's really good. Um, but they could have done that with, with all the... With, with the Batman. They could have had an individual Batman story with not... not we don't need to see... From the beginning again, his parents being killed. You don't have to need to do that all over again, but they can develop an individual story. Uh, I don't know. I, I just feel that it's become more about commercialism rather than the art form. And I really, I'm kind of exhausted, uh, to be quite honest. I'm really exhausted and I feel kind of disillusioned with how the movie industry has been going game industry there's some good games uh, sometimes game industry can be a little bit commercial over commercialized and it's just that people just people don't people want more original ideas now it's like can we come up with some creative ideas rather than recycling the same old story again and again like can we come up with some new characters can we come up with some new stories that are actually 
unique like one thing I liked about the Twilight Zone is that they always had a different story with different characters each week I used to watch the old 60s show uh, the Twilight Zone I used to love that show and they also had an 80s an 80s um, show and I really enjoyed that one too because it's it was uh, very creepy it was scary but not in a horrific way it was scary in a psychological way the, the, the idea that something strange and unex scientifically unexplainable would happen like a, like a, some kind of phenomenon or unique um, anomaly would happen in reality that would totally defy all logical explanation I like that concept it's really nice concept what is, what's in here? Nothing's in here, is it? Yeah, nothing's in there. Anyways, continue building here. I liked the the, the, the original Twilight Zone, like the 80s Twilight Zone. And I also enjoyed uh, the Outer Limits. If anyone, you know, like, if you like the, the Outer Limits, I really enjoyed that show. There was a 60s series with the Outer Limits. And I liked how... It was it was a little longer than the Twilight Zone uh, show series episode. Uh, it had a uh, what it had was um, it had that show had we get these salmon out of the way. That show had an hour long show and it was uh, involving some kind of extraterrestrial. But their stories were so interesting and the extraterrestrial was never the same. They would have different actors play different parts um, in the movie, um, and and they would have the the extraterrestrial uh, either be good or bad. It wouldn't the extraterrestrial would never be the same. They would have a, a benevolent or highly evolved extraterrestrial being, and in another episode they would have an evil extraterrestrial being, a monster. Uh, sometimes they would have the monster to be unreasonable and uh, beast-like. Other times they would have uh, like a Spock, Mr. Spock-like alien, like a very logical and intellectual, well-balanced alien. And the alien would come to like teach the humans a lesson or, or the human alien would, would give them a piece of, their mi of its mind to help humanity evolve. Or other times there would be a, a monster, a creature that the humans create. There was some times that there was, like, there was like a Frankenstein monster, rather than an alien monster, or the creature would be like a creation that the humans were either directly or indirectly responsible, and the creature was like, like the 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 results of an experiment gone awry. And it's like, those are good stories, and they were. It was a '60s show, late '60s, and it was so. And they often they would deal with issues of, that were of, um, pertinent to the 60s era. I really appreciated that. That was really good. And, uh, yeah, what they, I don't know, Netflix sort of does that with, um, similar to Twilight Zone and Outer Limits, they do the show, um, The Black Mirror. I've got to see that sh I still got to watch that show just to see what it's all about, all the hubbub is about. But they, they kind of get the idea is that having more, um, you know those those what are they called? Um, they're called uh, episodic uh, anthology shows. Those are interesting because they because they have to come up with a unique story with unique characters every episode. It's not like a continuous. I do like series. I do like cliffhangers where they, you have a hero who has to go on a mission and he's he's on a continuous mission either in Star Trek or some superhero show and he's like you know we have a cliffhanger suspense adventure that's that's good that's a good idea but it's like I like the kind of the Twilight Zone anthology kind of idea so I like that I, I really wish they would do more of those kind of shows and um, you know if they can come up with some movies if Hollywood some filmmakers can come up with some really creative writing and come up with some really interesting science fiction, fantasy, horror stories with a touch of mystery in it. 
But surprise me, guys. I've seen it all. I've seen ghost movies. I've seen demon movies. I've seen alien movies. I've seen robots taking over the world movies. I've seen alien invasion movies. I've seen uh, uh, biological creation, Frankenstein quality movies. I've seen just about every kind of sci-fi fantasy horror movie. Going back to bed so I get some day daylight again. I've seen just about every kind of single dog on trope that you can come up with. And it's like, oh my god, can you come up with an original idea already? It's like it's like what are what has happened to the imagination of the human race? It's like can we come up with some creative ideas? Can we come up with some some original concepts? Or is that too much to ask? It's like holy Toledo is like it's like I get this feeling of I've been here before this this when I watched movies uh, have you ever had that you know we always talk about people have talked about uh, deja vu well I get that with movies I get that with movies it's so creepy I'm playing I'm watching a movie sometimes a video game but most cases, it's a it's a movie. I'm I'm playing. I'm watching a movie either on on film, or I'm wa I'm playing it on a DVD or a Blu-ray, or I'm watching it on Netflix. And I say, "Holy shit, I've seen I I've, I've seen this story before." What what is it? What is what what is this going on here? And I I get some to be quite honest with you, I get some really creepy feelings that. Uh, filmmakers are making movies not only about my ideas but about my life I get these weird weird intuitions that my life is like being turned into a movie and that so the characters in the movie are like reflections of my own life uh, maybe not directly not necessarily word for words character for character um, L um, not not necessarily every single um, incident in my life is turned into a movie. No, 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 it's not that not that blatant, but more subtle. Even the characters, like in a in a science fiction fantasy movie, I see similar circumstances that they're kind of like, you know, relationship issues, and uh, I just saw I just see come strange uh, undercurrents or strange reflections in the fictional stories of my life it's like oh, what it, what is going on here and I, that's you know i guess when you kind of live like a hermit for a while you kind of start going a little bit funny in the head you start to you know doubt your own sanity doubt your own reality um kind of like your you know a good movie to see is the truman show sometimes i wonder if the movies out there the games are like a reflection of my life if my life is one big theater it's like people are watching every mo movement of my life and I get I get that feeling but you know it's very important that you don't think about that too much because it'll drive you nuts it'll drive you off the wall so you want to stay focus on what you're doing stay focus on your projects and don't get uh, look at all those zombies look at all of them I like to just put them all in one place I like to just keep them there and keep them under wraps. I don't want them to get out of get out of there. Let's see if I can just keep them all in one place. A pit, <laughs> a pit of zombies. Get my sword out. All right. Anyways, that's kind of my ramblings today. I'm going to stay focused on my project now, which is building this wall, this castle wall.
Look at all those water zombies. Look at them. Let's see if we can reduce some of the wall climbing ability. What would happen if I just got some sand? Not sandstone, but just a bunch of sand. Where's there? Get some sand here. Let's see what happened to this. Let's crush them. Let's crush them all. I don't need them here. You want to go. Zombies, you want to be around, don't be around here. Don't need your time here. We don't take too kindly to you, water zombies. Just get out of here. Permanently. Crush, 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 crush. Get back in there. Just die already, already. I don't want you here. You're troublesome. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. That's the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. That's how you get rid of those water zombies. Yeah, I won't be hearing them again. Where are they now? There's another one there. Let's get rid of this one. Get them rid of them already. All right, that's better. I think it's a little more peaceful now for my villagers. All right, let's get back to the building, shall we? Let's see what's going on here with my wall. Keep building here. We're going to be taking a break in a few minutes. I'm just building a wall, just doing a little bit at a time. And I found this is a great place in the, on this YouTube channel series that I'm doing. It's mini series. Is if I just talk about stuff that's on my mind, nothing too complicated, nothing too personal, just stuff on about movies and shows and technology and stuff I like to talk about. I think it's been a great uh, venue, a great vehicle for me to just talk about stuff. Because Minecraft is a great place for just. Uh, kind of like building your projects and and letting stuff off your chest. It's a great place to just talk and talk and talk. I find it a very nice place to just, nice game to just go off on tangents. And it's okay because there's no real emergency. And there's no real rush unless you're on a, some kind of mission. Uh, right now, I'm not on a mission right now. I'm just building. So this is actually a great way for me to just express myself, my creativity, my my rambling thoughts and it's a great way for me just to go off on a tangent and just have fun I like doing that so continue building here I'm gonna fill this up with sto with sandstone don't want any water here focus on building here up
here. I'll finish this part of the wall here. I do enjoy Minecraft very much. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be keep making these videos, but I really, really like Minecraft. I think what I personally like the most about Minecraft is the the creative aspect. Despite the uh, there are missions, there are like there's monsters you can battle and missions you can do, and, and obviously an Ender Dragon at the very end of the the Ender level. But I really like how you can go off on a tangent with this game, and you can just build and build and build, and you can build your own little fantasy world with these castles and stuff. I just love this. The, the ability to just be go out go off on a tangent building building having creative ideas it's just such a cool game it just I never had played a game quite like it that's just unabashedly creative unabashedly it's like Lego for adults I just love that aspect of this game I like that it just like, it gives me the ability to just go off on a tangent and have fun building here on this floor here all right that's obviously done let's go back to the, uh, the bed too I can get some sleep going on here um, I don't see any villagers here I wonder if that they all been turned into zombies or what I should get some. I should get some kind of uh, torch, if I can prevent them from entering or prevent them from uh, from reproducing. That'd be awesome. zombie dug on it you're not allowed to be here zombie you get out of here or I'm gonna slaughter you without a moment's hesitation there you go it's safe to go now you're safe now human villager you're safe I'm gonna make sure you're safe and you can live in peace in this village. You're gonna I'm gonna create a very peaceful village here, guys. You're gonna be able to live your life. You guys, the villagers are gonna be able to have a nice peaceful place to live. And you're gonna have the ability to plant crops and do your different tr trades peacefully without any mobs, without any uh, raiders even. Raiders entering your your, your place. Let's see if I can. Okay, that's basically it for that. I'm gonna fix this. All this stuff will be fixed later on. But right now, I just wanna. I just wanted some daylight while I'm working on this wall here. We're coming to the end of this part of the wall. I'm obviously not done, but I wanted to get rid of some of that water. I wanted to get rid of those water zombies so I can be able to do a better wall without any kind of interference, without any kind of water in the way. I, I am creating a moat as well, but basically there's not gonna be any zombies within the confines of my wall. That's the, that's the idea. Get out of here. That the llamas are okay. They're they're peaceful. No zombies allowed within the confines of my wall. Period. Let's continue building here. Let's continue building. Just gonna get through this.
Okay. Just gonna build this end here. Start at this end rather than rather than rushing it. Just gonna keep building here. Piece by piece, level by level, and that way I can have a more thicker wall, better quality. It'll take a little longer, but at least the quality will be better than if I was to rush it. A very thick castle wall would be excellent, excellent idea to keep out the, the raiders. Building. Little by little. Kind of build a better wall, so. Ah, oh, not another zombie. I gotta find where your uh, spawn is at, zombie, so I can destroy your spawn. Alright. Stuff out of you. up here. Focus on this level here. All right. Almost to the end of this wall here, then we're gonna take a break. Because we don't need to go for hours and hours building this wall, we just take some breaks and continue on in our day.
We're nearing the end of this wall here. We're just going to finish this wall up here. I could build this here. I wonder if I can fill it, finish it up, this part of the wall. Let's see how much I can build in a short period of time here. Need some more uh, torches to light the place up. <clears throat> All right. near the end of this wall. I'm just going to keep building until we finish this part of the wall. We're not going to complete the entire wall. This is a very large island that we we're living on right now. We're just going to create a portion of this wall here.
One of the secrets of success, if I might share with them with you folks, while I'm here, is you know, you know, see some of the llamas there, they're hopping around in the water. I'm not gonna get distracted by that, and I'll tell you why. I'm focused right now on building these cat this castle wall. A nice castle with towers. Very stylish. And I'm not gonna get distracted by anything right now. Because I there'll be time for that later. There'll be time for little villagers and animals and crops and building um, houses and interesting little gadgets and stuff later later. What's important is to protect my villagers from the the raiders that are outside and the spawns, the mobs that are around here. I am going to get rid of all the mobs within this these castle walls. Outside they can be as plentiful and bountiful as possible, but uh, as far as indoors they're not going to be around. They're not going to be allowed to pass these walls. This is going to be a powerful, powerful castle boundary here. So, that being said, I'm just going to continue building this wall here. And we're going to make it a beautiful piece of work, of art, when it's done. All right, Let's this level here, bear. Almost done here. It's getting near the end.
almost there here. Almost done the game here. This part of the game. Gonna finish this part of the wall very soon. end of this wall here getting near the end I never worked so hard on one wall in Minecraft before really really and uh, determined to finish this segment not the entire wall but this segment of the wall I build a nice protective castle around these people someday done. Let's finish it up. Yeah, voila. Obviously, we're not going to do anything else right now. But that part is done. We're going to just look upon our beautiful wall so far. Nice protective wall. Obviously, <laughs> I had to fix that tower. But, uh,. I'm not going to get too concerned about it right now. I'm going to fix this interior later in our future episode. Yeah, all this water has to be removed. But we've run out of time, guys. 
Let's get this. Get out of there. All right. Um, <clears throat> but so far we're we're looking good. Our our castle walls starting to take shape, as you can see here. We're going to have towers all around the the the, the village, all around this castle area. I'm going to put towers on on that air part of the the uh, the island as well. That's going to look good. So. I think we'll take a little break here and we'll continue on another day. We'll worry about other uh, fringes and and stuff like that. We'll worry about stuff like that later on. Hard to see when you're... I won't be able to see what I'm doing here. can't see over... It's too high. this another day I have a big day ahead of me but I'm going to a pool party so I'm gonna take a little break I'll save and quit Captain Kool-Aid man is my hero we will continue on a better a better day we'll do some more exciting stuff but we were able to do a lot of stuff now and got a lot accomplished thanks gamers for watching me play Minecraft Lithos with my hero Captain Kool-Aid man number seven I would appreciate it if you would like this video if you haven't already. Favorite, comment, appreciate your feedback. Uh, some of the stuff I talked about earlier in this Minecraft episode, if I, uh, some of the stuff interests you. I appreciate your feedback on what I said. I talked about movies and games and how we need more creativity, more, more care and consideration. When making these movies, we need to do more. Um, uh, we need to do more create, creative artistic efforts in filmmaking and game design rather than rushing stuff into the marketplace uh, without you know considering any errors we've made or we need to take, put more quality rather than quantity in our products that's what I was talking about and that's why I'm taking so long with this building rather than going on missions I'm building a really quality solid castle wall so thanks for watching gamers please click the links in the description uh, check out my Facebook and Twitter for my vase, Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater Facebook and Twitter, and as well as my Video Gamers Oasis uh, business page on Facebook. Please check that out as well. Appreciate your feedback and appreciate you would uh, support some of the, the affiliates that I'm working with, including the Brave Browser. See what the Brave Browser could do for you folks. Please click the link in the description. Download the Brave Browser and helps helps the, the, the work that I do, helps finance the YouTube channel that I do. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome weekend. Great summer. Keep cool. Take care of each other. And uh, I'll sip my cold coffee here. And remember, gamers, you know what I want to say next? Honor and respect each other. When you're competitive gaming, play with honor. Play like the honorable samurais of ancient times. The honorable knights of medieval times. Play with honor and respect. Play with your pride high up, but with dignity and respect. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching. Um, and keep subscribe. Keep subscribed to my gaming channel, Video Gamers Always Play Theater, and click the notification bell. Bye. Till next time. The browsers of today are broken. They've been overtaken by a barrage of sneaky and annoying ads. Trackers that follow your habits and cookies that build profiles and all sorts of other internet clutter that's taking precedence over the content that you want to see. In fact, these useless bites can take up to a whopping 50% of page load times, with a third of it anxiously trying to learn more about you. To make matters worse, some ad blockers are even letting ads through when large advertisers pay them. But do you really want a leaky ad blocker? It's because of these very reasons that we developed Brave, a new browser that kicks internet crud to the curb and makes it faster, safer, and better to surf the web than your current browser. With Brave, 
everything you need is built right in. We integrated technology that automatically blocks trackers, annoying ads, and shields everything that can cramp your style and destruct your privacy. With it, you can expect increased speeds nearly two times faster on laptops and up to four times faster on mobile. And unlike any other browser, Brave allows you to support your favorite publishers with automatic micropayments, so it's a win-win for you and your favorite sites. To top it all off, Brave is open source, because we truly believe it's our web and we need to fix it together. So ask yourself this question. Do you want a web browser made for the internet of today? If so, try Brave. It's faster, safer, and ad-free. It's easy to support Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater. Download the Brave browser. Click on the link https colon forward slash forward slash brave.com forward slash vid 610.